What's going on everyone? It's Ed Zoller with Villa Realty Group and I'm going to try something different. I'm going to put out this market update in a PDF form, uh, but I did build it on PowerPoint and I thought it'd be different if I actually did voiceover uh, and going through this update with you so I can explain a little bit more in detail than just graphs. And I'm not just going to read it verbatim, uh, but many of you like me might like to listen to these videos while driving or in the car and you don't have time to just sit down the computer and open up an email. So I'm going to give you kind of a little update on what this market update is and uh, a little bit more about uh, why I'm going to be putting these out monthly. So um, I'm going to start now in January. I'm going to call this one the end of the 2023 year for Southwest Florida single family housing. Uh, and for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Ed Zoller, worked at Villa Realty Group for 22 years. Uh, I have currently thousands of transactions. I've helped over 1,500 people buy homes uh, and uh, have done almost a third of a billion in sales and real estate. And, and what I used to do, for those of you who know me recently, like in the last 10 years, is I used to put out these updates after our last market crash. Starting in about 2006 and seven, I would educate investors, sellers, buyers uh, about the trends of the market, looking at key point data. Uh, what's been fantastic is my access to data is so much better than it was. It would take me two days of data collecting, a whole day to write the market update, and I can whip these out in about a half a day uh, because now the data is just at my fingertips. I will source what my data points are at the end of this video. So let's get started and give you guys an update about the Southwest Florida market. So uh, this is going to be the first of many to come. Those of you who knew me you know, more than 10 years ago knew I put these out every single month, uh, tracking at that time the crash of the market uh, to look for signs that it was st uh, being stable and stabilizing. Um, so that's all the way back from 2007 is what I used to do. Uh, but as I've always said to people, uh, informing you of the facts and data uh, so you can make a decision whether it's a good time to buy or sell uh, and making that tough decision without data, I don't think you can fully uh, answer that question uh, without knowing the facts about the market. Um, so feel free if you want to pause this video and read uh, this PowerPoint or actually click it on and follow with along with me, uh, but I'm going to get to the first slide. So the first piece of data that I look at is supply and demand, the basics of all data. That is Economics 101. And just so you know, if you don't know what economics or supply and demand is, uh, as demand levels for homes decline, prices tend to um, uh, rise. Uh, th that's the law of demand. Uh, as prices rise, so does supply. Uh, they are inversely related. Uh, demand, obviously for homes, that we can track that with the amount of sales that Lee County has and compare it to the longer term averages. Uh, and then supply can, of course, be monitored monthly uh, by looking at how many homes are for sale, how much is inventory, how much surplus do we have. And, and so I'm going to take a look at that first graph and explain to you who may, some of you that aren't watching uh, the PowerPoint and are just listening to me, I'll try to explain as much as I can. So this is a track of since 2016 and every bullet point is by month. Um, and you can look at this trend and you see these little mountains. And this is something I have seen with this market for 20 years. We have what we call here a season. The supply goes up and then the season happens and people buy up that supply. The supply goes down, then up, then down. And you can see in 16, 17, and 18, and it looks like it was starting to do it in 19, but COVID, remember this, 2020, um, we were getting this little mountain again. Uh, and those, those trends are uh, slowly going up. That's as income goes up, so do people's affordability. And so we are starting to see uh, this inventory starting to increase and increase, but then slowly going down. Obviously, since 2020 and COVID, uh, we plummeted horribly. This caused prices to go up. Remember, if there's low supply, prices tend to uh, go up because of that, because there's nothing on the shelf to buy. But as you can see recently, 2023, we are on a steady and steep increase in homes for sale. As a matter of fact, uh, searching every county in Florida, as far as percent increases, Lee County is second only to Charlotte, and that our inventory grew year to year over 100%. Charlotte, 129%. That's just our neighbor to the north. So when a supply graph is going up sharply, that usually means there's a greater likelihood of home values declining when you see an increase this high. 
our long-term average, and this is very important to, to, to compare if it's normal or not. Do we have too much inventory or too little? Um, if, and the, you use the long-term average to, to compare that. Our long-term average is 6,198 homes in Lee County. We have a lot more than that right now. Actually, a matter of fact, a 28% in plus, in, a surplus of that inventory. And that more pinpoints towards our prices going down. So that's supply. Let's look at demand. So demand has been rapidly decreasing. This graphic goes all the way from 20, uh, January 2020 uh, and shows you the trends. As you can see, the little peaks and valleys, again, our season. Look at that little bubble in March. Look at that little bubble in 2022, uh, in 2021. And then the bubble in 2023, um, those aren't bubbles. Those are just increases of demand, and they happen March and April every single time. That is our season, and we've always been like that. But if you notice that the peaks are slowly downward trending, including looking at our long-term average of 1,917 homes uh, selling in a month, um, we're, we didn't even hit that long-term average in 2023. But now our demand for homes is at record lows. Uh, lo I had to go back all the way uh, 15 years ago to see when the last time we sold only 1,173 homes in a month in the entire county. So this is kind of an analysis that you look at a couple things. You look at demand compared to long-term average. You look at the trending slopes. You look at the season. You look at some normalcy and stability here. And so demand is plummeted. So let's talk about why. And that's what the next slide's for. So low demand, high supply. That's so far what we've gotten to. The reason demand is so low is there is a great graph. And what I do is I kind of look at the U.S. Census Bureau and I look at average household income monthly for Lee County. And uh, and right now that, that is right around $74,000 a year. Uh, 15 years ago, it was like $40,000 a year. So people are making more money now than they did a decade or so ago. Uh, but when you look at the affordability of a home, you have to look at it as a percentage of what the average person makes because the average person usually can buy the average home as long as they're making the average wage. So back in 2006, people can't afford homes. Demand drops. And from what we learned looking at past data, that if it ever goes above long-term average uh, steeply, um, then we tend to see a correction. And that back in 06, we were at 46, 45 uh, percent of someone's gross income, gross income, not net income, going towards a mortgage. And we plummeted and we stayed crashed for quite a long time, four or five years. And you can see even then our long term average is 23 percent, uh, but it dipped below that into almost a 16, 17 percent range. That's because we had a lot of cheap homes and a lot of foreclosures. Um, once in 2013, as you can see here, it's fairly flat. It's a fairly flat curve that averages between 20 and 23. Uh, the median is 23%, which just tells me that uh, people can afford 23%. They buy homes when it's at 23%. If it's under that, they buy more homes. And if it's a little above that, that's okay too. But if it ever steeply goes above that long-term average, as you can see in 2021, we are now higher than we were as far as affordability, making us the least affordable in our history. Um, so what's important about these numbers to understand is we can actually do the math on this. If the household income makes $74,000 a year and the median is 23%, then we can figure out that people can afford $17,000 a year or 23% of 74 grand on a mortgage. That's, that's $1,425 a month. These are going to be important numbers when we get back to what it's going to take to stabilize this market. But that's the important thing about this graph. And I track this monthly. I know these say years, but this isn't a once a year data thing. Uh, I just pinpoint the month we're in and, and, and project it on the graph as such. Uh, but let's get to the next slide. So first, we got to take our average home price. And as you can see here, yes, we topped over 300 grand back in 06. Obviously, we plummeted down to close to almost 100,000 uh, and then 13. Nice, steady, predictable market from 13 all the way to 2020 to the start of COVID. Uh, what I saw is when COVID happened, the inventory dropped. Just in the country, our inventory dropped by 
five and a half million homes. Not that they sold, they just were pulled off the market. I'm one agent in one county in one state. I lost eight listings myself, and I couldn't blame the clients. They didn't want people in their home. So since the last crash, um, uh, you know, our prices stayed stabilized right around that 200 to 250 range. And remember, too, we also had 3 and 4% interest rates all during that time. In 2020, our prices started going up drastically, which now our average home price is at almost $400,000. So remember what I talked about the $1,400 mortgage payment. Uh, we're going to get to that. Um, historically, since 2012, real estate appreciates between 3 and 6%. Eight straight years, that was a true statement. If you were to predict on any one of those eight years that we'd go up three to six percent on homes, that home prices would go up three to six percent, you would be 100% correct, eight years straight. But as you can tell in 2020, a steep increase for a two year span that uh, happened mostly because of lack of supply and then this panic demand. And then the big demand was the investors who bought 19% of our inventory of already depleted inventory making it next to impossible for homeowners to buy homes uh, and what did Wall Street do they bought them all up they tried to put renters in there and now they're starting to liquidate so in order to stabilize we have to take this data and run it through the math we just talked about the slide previous and that's what I did in this next one here so a lot of people are saying oh oh the feds are going to drop interest rates and the market's going to come back exactly when they do that so let's do the math on this. How much do they have to drop it to actually have us stabilize? I'm not talking about going up. I'm talking to stabilize our current conditions. So let's take the average home, 397,000, plug in today's interest rates of 90, you know, on a typical FHA loan of 96.5%. As of when I wrote this, I pulled up that interest rate, and it's about the same today at six and a quarter interest rate. Here's the monthly payment, 2911. That's your monthly payment. The average home the today's interest rate taxes insurance all that it would come out to be 29 11 57 a month that's double what people here can afford so there's only two ways that we can correct this either prices drop or interest rates drop so let's do the extreme on both levels if we only drop the interest rates we'd have to drop the rates to get that 29 11 payment to back to that 14, 1500 range, we'd have to drop the pay, uh, percentage below 1%. That's not gonna happen. That's the only way $397,000 price is gonna work, is dropping it under 1%, not by 1%, under 1%. That's not gonna happen. What if we kept interest rates at six and a quarter and only drop price? We'd have to drop that almost $400,000 home down to a base price of 175 to get that monthly payment. So realistically, what's going to happen is prices are going to go down and interest rates are going to go down. Well, let's say they drop them to five. Well, then the home values would will not lose $200,000. They'd lose $175,000 to a base price home of two hundred grand. And if we ever get back down to four, then the home prices would lose $160,000. So, so either way you look at it, a, a, a quarter point, a half a point, even a full point off six and a quarter, doesn't really stop our houses from dropping in value to get to that sustainability part. So my bottom line is uh, on this data is that uh, prices are going to go down. That's just what I think, just based on the data itself. They have to go down. They have to stabilize. How far they go down is how, dependent on how far interest rates will go down. And this is not just a Southwest Florida thing. I can track states like Idaho, Texas, California, Georgia, and I think... No one has to be afraid to say that, yeah, we had a bubble, and that bubble's already popped. It's not starting to pop. It already has, six, seven, eight months ago. So we can look at this data to say, yes, it looked like it definitely has a pop. To actually say that, though, there's other data pieces we have to say to say, did we pop? Uh, when did we pop? Uh, and what do you look at? Well, the data points I look at as an agent is uh, percentage of price cuts, total days it takes to sell a home, and the home value growth year over year, which is a very important graph that has a lot of detail into it, but it makes sense when you see it. So let's go to the next slide. Price cuts. When an owner has a home and it's not selling because it's overpriced uh, or it's having a hard time marketing, um, 
you will see price cuts in the real estate market. Um, that's the one thing agents have to do. And they drop their asking price. So we can actually track the percentage of homeowners that can drop their asking price uh, as, a, as a percentage of the total listings that are out there. Now, if you only have two listings and one drops so at 50%, makes it sound like really big. We have thousands of listings, uh, almost close to 10,000 listings. So our long-term average, the average listing, one out of five will have a price drop in any given month. And that's our long-term average. As you can tell from this graph, we were hovering around 23, 27% in 2017-18. Obviously, after COVID, there were no price drops. There was price increases. <laughs> that exponentially went up. Uh, but as you can see, we're in the steep climb that now 31% as of 31.7% as of November. And then I just looked up December and we're at 34.7. So that is steadily going up. That graph is going to be exponentially going up. And if we ever do see 50% price drops, that's exactly what they were during the height of our crash. Not the height of the bubble, but the height of the crash. Um, so to stabilize, we'd have to see these price cuts getting back to long-term average of 20%, where it was a normal market. Uh, and obviously, we're not there yet to say that, yeah, I think we popped. And according to here, 2022 was the year that our graph started to exceed that long-term average. The next graph talks about days on the market. If a house is, if the house market's hot, then houses don't last very long. And as you can tell here, always since 2016, and you can see again that season where the days on the market don't take as long, then they take longer. And you can always see the peaks of each of those mountains are right in the middle of summer, July, June. Uh, that's when the days on the market's the worst. Things don't sell as great when we're 95 degrees and hurricanes coming through. Uh, but obviously days on the market uh, never quite dropped below since 2016, that long-term average. But it did in 2020. Again, COVID. Uh, as soon as January 2020 hit, the days on market disappeared and things went really, really hot. Uh, they did see a spike in 2022 where the days went back to long-term average and then it dipped again. And then in 2023, it's on this upward trend. Um, from what I can say here, this is actually, we're at a long-term average. This is the one piece of data that says um, uh, that maybe we're normal, but you have to look at the trend. Is it going up or is it going down? We'll have to keep monitoring this to get an understanding because of that chaos that you see in that 2021. There was no rhyme and reason. It was not this little line of mountains, as you can see here. Um, but the trend is starting to go up. So that's a piece of data you look at. And then the most important piece, the sales growth month over month for Lee County. So when you track month over month sales growth, is the market growing? Is a stable market grows. We can help pinpoint changes uh, in the market and, and whether they're negative or positive. So from this graph, from the years 2013, 2021, it's almost like it's a flat line. It's a little up, it's a little down. This should be that. You should have positive growth. And you can see all those numbers are positive as much as 14%, 9%, 5%, 3%, even 0.9% is still growth. That's like if this was a stock and you were making all that between 2013 and 2020, great. Obviously in 2021, 2022, abnormally steep, going all the way up to 31% growth month over month. It just kept going and going. And you can see the same exact steepness back in 2005 and six, which we now know was our real estate, start of our real estate crash. And then you have to look at the last time we were in the negatives. Currently, we are in the negatives. We are at negative 0.8%. That means our market is not growing currently. And we have hit negatives that we haven't seen since. You'd have to go all the way back into the 2010, 2011 times when we we're in the negatives on that. So that's another pinpoint in a graph that I'm going to be tracking monthly uh, and putting in these updates because this will definitely show a curve, a bottom, and a slight increase up. And that would, I would say, then that means that our market is starting to grow. So let's recap. Um, looking at this, the bear data, our supply has doubled, 28% higher than our long term average currently. Buyer demand has hit a 10 year low. The Mortgage Brokers Association puts out stats and has a graph uh, that shows mortgage applications. And I'd have to go back 40 years to get as low as we are right now, where mortgage applications, obviously no one's refining their house. No one who had 3% is going to refi it at 6. 
Um, so that's all dropped off as well. So that's a little misleading. That doesn't necessarily tell you the market, but it does tell you a trend that's happening where people just aren't getting mortgages. The average wage earner in Lee County has to spend 45 to 47 percent of their gross income to afford a home. You and I both know you can't do that. Average home prices are at 397. That's far too high for our current interest rate. Um, and even a small drop in interest rates by the feds will not fix this market. It will take a combination of massive price drops and rate decreases to stabilize the market. And our price cuts as of now, nine year high at 31%. Days on the market went from a record low of 30 days to now over 60, although it is at long term average. But that month over month sales growth is currently in the negatives and that hasn't happened since December of 2010. So let's, let's look at Southwest Florida and just look at some of these numbers comparing month to month because sometimes this can open up some other uh, data points and things to look into. So you can see from December to January, our total number of homes for sale has gone up. Uh, that means we have exist more listings than we had the previous month surplus. Uh, amount of solds obviously uh, has gone down. The pending sales, that is the homes that, going un that are going under contract and getting ready to close, those are down. The new home sales, this was something that really I track because it's important. How, how many new homes came up on the market from builders? 200 in a month. That's a lot of homes. Our time on market slightly went up, but this is a number that doesn't increase very uh, fast. Our median asking price is down, our median selling price is down, and our percent of asking to price sold, which means of all the solds that happened in the month of December and January, uh, what was the sale on the average, did they sell for 100% of asking price or 95? And you can see this is starting to trend towards the low 90s. So in summary, uh, all those things I just said, uh, you have to look at data and come up with your own opinions. I'm telling you my opinion, and that's it's, it's just what that is. It's an opinion. Um, uh, with all that data, all these point to a decline in the market. Um, lat and I believe that from the other data we talked about earlier that our bubble popped last year. Um, in the future, we want to see signs of stabilization first because the first the market has to stabilize before it goes up. And I totally remember it like it was yesterday. Um, during the 2007, 8, and 9 run, I would put out these updates and I would say in conclusion, we're down again, we're down again, we're down again. And then there was one update I gave in 2010, and I actually said uh, uh, after 18 consecutive months of dropping, it finally stopped. And it just stopped dropping. It didn't go up. It just stopped dropping. And it plateaued. Now, it did plateau for a year and a half. And that was because we had a lot of foreclosures. And that's what I firmly believe. We will not have a three to four year low and a plateau on the bottom because of what we don't because we won't see as many foreclosures as we had before. Um, but that was a sign of the bottom. And that was back in 2010. And we're not there as obviously. Um, so uh, what I believe and with all this stuff I talked about, if you're a seller, then um, is it too late? You know, that's the first three question for people. Did I miss the boat? No, because we went up so fast, so quickly, and so much, and with such intensity, that we are still way over. Prices of homes are still way over pre-COVID levels, and there are still people who may want to buy that. I called it the fake equity that you artificially gained in 2021 and 2022. It's still there. It's just losing more and more every single month. So if you wanted to cash out, if this wasn't a permanent uh, place of residence, then um, or your primary residence, then in, in cashing out might be a good idea if it's an investment. Um, so as for buyers out there, get ready. You know your time is coming, and it's soon. Is it this year? Is it next year? Is it next month? Uh, probably not next month, but um, putting out these updates will help give you guidance on where the market is going. I'll keep tracking each graph month by month, looking for changes, indicating you know transitions in markets, and uh, be able to uh, educate you so that you can make the best informed decision whether you're buying or selling. Um, next month, I'm going to add a few more. This is a, just basic data points. Uh, there's going to be more rates for you investors out there. You want to look at cap rates. You want to look at rental uh, wages. You want to see what the rental market's doing. Uh, there's a whole different data set to that. I will put that in there here and there because a majority of you do own your home. To you that 
owned your home and you bought it with what I probably told you was the seven to ten year game plan in mind. Uh, you loved your home when you bought it. You still love your home. It doesn't matter what the market does. When I bought my home uh, during the crash, uh, I thought it had gone down low enough. It still went down another seventy-five to hundred thousand dollars, but it didn't matter. No, I'm still in that house today, sixteen years later. Uh, so it doesn't matter what you paid. It doesn't matter what fake equity goes away. Um, uh, you know, so you're 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 fine because in seven to ten years, and it's not going to matter. Uh, so don't. I hopefully this isn't a, a panic thing, or you read this and go, "Oh my God, the market's crashing." Because you have to understand if you sell your home that you're living in, you have to go buy someplace, uh, and, and you're going to be paying a higher dollar amount for that too. Um, so so think of all that. Uh, so the places I did get all this data from: uh, U.S. Census Bureau, Zillow, Fred, which is. Um, uh, Freddie Mac, uh, Realtor.com, and of course our Southwest Florida MLS has a lot of that data that I pull in in real time, and then just you know put it on a graph and put it in Excel and and put the graph into the PowerPoint. So I would love your guys' feedback. What did you think of this market update? Uh, is there any data points you want to see? You want me to uh, track uh, anything you'd like me to? Uh, put in this thing that are interesting to you. Please do not hesitate to call me, text me, email me your, your requests. I'd be happy to. This is your update, not mine. I'd love to track what you think is important as well. Uh, and I'd also like your love your feedback too about the delivery system, uh, how you enjoy this. Do you like the voiceover thing I'm doing? Do you just want to read the PDF and have a good day kind of thing? Uh, any kind of insights you want me to add to the market updates? I would love to get your feedback on this. And of course, uh, don't just think it's just Southwest Florida that I can do this tracking too. I actually had a person just yesterday ask me for a specific zip code in upstate New York and I looked up everything. I can look up all this data anywhere in the country by zip, by metro, by city, by state. So if you are not living here in Southwest Florida and you have a house and you're one of my investors from 10, 12 years ago and you want me to look up your specific neighborhood, not every neighborhood appreciated like we did. Uh, many neighborhoods appreciate more than we did, and some have crashed sooner, and some have crashed not yet. Uh, so I have no problems of looking up any of that. Of course, I'm not going to put that in a market update if it's specific, but I will send that to you. Uh, either send me an email uh, requesting this data, call me, text me. Uh, you all should have still my number, but if you don't, there I am. Uh, so uh, editvillarealty.com teacherscanbuyhomes.com. Of course, my website for you teachers that want to buy homes. Uh, I will tell you, I'm telling most teachers to hold on tight, you know, but some situations are they have to get a home uh, or, or the right deal comes along. And I will say that for anyone who closed a home in the last 12 months or so, the deals we got were pretty good because we were able to get interest rates that don't exist. There was uh, someone that will smile when she hears this, but uh, got her a 3.99 and 4.99% interest rate when interest rates were 7.5. Builders are panicked right now. They will do anything for you to buy their homes. They're building like mad, and so they're suffering the most. Uh, that is what's causing the market to go down and driving it because they will sell a home for 50 grand less than what it's worth without blinking an eye. You and I selling our home could never do that. We could never offer incentives of eighty and dollars and $100,000 for a buyer to buy one home from us, but builders can. And you're going to continue to see that trend happening. So deals are never just found. They're made. Uh, and, and so it's just finding the right time, the right place, finding the right people. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying this. I'm going to try to do more of this. Uh, you expect this at least once a month. And, and I look forward to hearing from all of you. Thank you so much again for paying attention and, and listening to all this. And I look forward to chatting with you soon. Bye-bye.